Alright, welcome back to The Existential Way. My name is Kevin Meredith. We're talking about truth itself, truth to life, continuing the words of Christ in John 5, 31 through 45. Now, we know truth itself to be the person of Jesus Christ. But we also know that there is a differentiation between the person of Christ and existing with the person of Christ in your life and how you get there. So we read, if I bear witness of myself, my testimony is not true. So much is the same way in the false church where people, um, they just bear witness of the person of Christ, you know. But even if, even Christ says, if you just bear, if I bear witness of myself, my testimony is not true. So we, we as chosen TIs, we as uh, existing individuals, we must not leave one thing undone. Because if we leave one thing undone, the other, the other thing is automatically going to be undone. We're just going to be striving toward it. So, um, to get there though, what's, what's, we talked about this, um, the person of Christ, you know, truth itself, but truth to life, that person of Christ in your eternal existence, in your, you know, an active living testimony in your life, there is another who bears witness of me, and I know that the testimony which he bears of me is true. So we go from beginning with truth itself, the person of Christ, and moving toward the person of Christ being alive in you, being in your very existence, being in your very present awakening. But you not replacing, so you're not replacing the person of Christ. This is Christ consciousness. Very different from existing in the way. You're not becoming Christ. You're fully aware of the person of the living Christ in your eternal walk with Him in the present moment, being made alive. Okay, so, there is another who bears witness of me, and I know that the testimony which he bears of me is true. So this is this thing where, how personal is your truth? How personal is the person of Christ in your life? How personally do you take him in your walk? You know, how alive has he made, uh, you know, made you in, in, in presenting you awareness and, and presence of witness and, um, you know, activation? You know, this is, one is not done without the other. So we have a beginning, truth itself, but then we have truth itself come to life. That's your existence and your walk with the person of Christ. So, the two go hand in hand. One cannot be done without the other, you know, and vice versa. So, what is the process, you know, the, and I've talked, you guys know I've talked about the process orientation of how personal you should take your walk, you know. And so, when we come to this place, and it's a, it's a, it's a place, life is like a place that you're in, but it's also a place that's in you. And, and it takes work on your part in a non-legalistic sense. It's very sacred. So in terms of not explaining away life, um, the opposite really is really what happens when you get to this place is there's no need to define it in terms of truth itself. And now if someone asks, what is truth itself? Well, you say, Truth itself is the person of Christ. You know, they're not... And if they can't believe it there, they can't take the word of the gospel at what at its base, then you've given them the message and you have to continue uncovering, being sanctified, uh, and going through the process of self-discovery to grow that place that the person of Christ is is making you alive in. 
And it's, it, it's not a physical place. It's a state of being indwelt by the Holy Spirit. It's a state of witness to and from God. Um, it's a state of Christ alive in your life, presenting you with the moment. So it's a place where you have to do the work, the pattern's been laid out before you, and you are, you are stepping into the blueprint, the pattern of Christ's uh, footsteps, which are specific to your experiences, just as they're specific to mine. And so we come to this place. It's a, it's a sanctified place, a place away from the old self and into the place with the new... You're a new creation now. So you're, the new creation means you are true self in alignment with the living person of Christ. And so within that interplay you are enacting an existing testimony, an eternal witness, that someone who is a free will, you know, someone who just chooses free will in, in the state of preconditioning, in the state of pre-existence, he or she only knows of the witness of Christ as the person of Christ, but does not seek to exhibit the action or, you know, the actionable verses that Christ is mentioning for you to be, to exist with, you know. And so, let's go on, verse 39 again. You search the scriptures because you think in them you have eternal life. Now, we know that there are people who are proclaiming to be Ber Bereans, and I'm not going to lie to you, there are people who know the scriptures better than me. Their whole conduct of study is to be a theologian with the scriptures. Now that's not exactly the same as doing what Christ says in terms of existing with Christ made alive in you, in your personal experiences to grow. That's not the same. And a lot of people, they're, they're, gonna, they're, they're sharp. You know, the wolves, don't get me wrong. Satan knows the scriptures like the back of his hand because he'll, he'll pick apart He'll take it out of context. And he remember, he did it to Christ in, in the testing in the wilderness. So we understand that he can pick apart certain scriptures at any moment and, and try to one-up you, you know, even, even to an elect. that They're going to try to do that, and they do it all the time. But the fact is, is, if one only witnesses to the person of Christ but forgets the experience that Christ is forementioning one to go through, to find that place, as he says, and, and let's read 39 and 40, and you'll see where I'm getting, that place. You search the scriptures because you think in them you have eternal life. So we're talking about, he's talking about the Pharisees, but we can, we can correlate this to the world. Okay, verse 40, yet you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. Now this is important. What does this mean? Does this mean you're going to you're going somewhere? No, from an existential standpoint, it's it's a it's a place that's not only sacred, but it's an inward it's an inward relation, it's an inward passion, and it's a place within you. You know, it's you're not it, it's a you know, and so it's an actionable place. Though it's a place where you're existing with the living person of Christ, and he's being, and not only that, but you're being made alive. Because he's alive. And see, we see this inner, there, there's not only a correlation here, but there is a, as an idea of, you know, we've talked about scripture supporting scripture, but life does the same thing. Life supports life, you know. And so, when Christ is made al alive in you, you are alive to this relationship that Christ is talking about. Verse 40 again, yet you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. See, these people, they go to Christ. These church, these Sunday goers, they go to Christ, but they, but they go to um, bear witness of, you know, as Christ says, if I bear witness of myself, verse 31, if I bear witness of myself, my testimony is not true. So these people, in an, in an inverse way, they go and they bear witness to the person of Christ, truth itself. But, but they miss the second step. They miss the step that is just as important in correlating to an existing testimony. And that is the witness of the Father 
there is another who bears witness of me, and I know that the testimony which he bears of me is true. But how do we know that? We go back down to 40. Yet you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. So it's a place that we go within that Christ is made alive within us, and we relate to him, and we are made alive, okay? So we understand that truth is not only itself the person of Christ, which it is, but for it to be fully realized, you and I, we must non-legalistically do our parts. We're not going somewhere, we're going within as individuals. We're uh, asking God to search our hearts, and but we're also taking the desires of our false selves away from the, out, at the outward appeal of, of, of the environment around us and all the bodily pursuits thereof. And we're going inward to the spirit man the true sense of the human being, in order that, like Christ says, he was saying to these Pharisees, yet you are not willing to come to me that you may have life. So where, where is he? Is Christ outside of you? Or is he within you? How, is there somewhere he's mentioning that you have to go and see? This is the thing, it's, it's within you, you know? Christ, and, and this is this place, and so, we talk about this leap of faith, though, um, in not explaining life away, because the concrete nature of truth itself should be so personal when you come to Christ and you meet Him at that place that, you know, you're going, and that's why the personal experiences of, of, who, of what you do, it makes you who you are. The choices you make, that becomes who you are, and ultimately who, who you are to be in relation to the living person of Christ in your life. And so, self-discovery, you know, you know, removing the layers of the old self, uh, going through the sanctification process of this type of orientation, which allows you to be more personal, not only with yourself, but towards your, your growth in getting to that inward place of, of Christ being made alive in you and giving you that eternal life that eternal qualification in the process. And so, one may ask, how do you just be? And really, to be honest, when people say skewed, they give you a skewed interpretation of something they can't, they, they haven't fully existed upon and, and, and studied and, and toiled with and prayed in and, and asked God for guidance in, it in a way, it's not a cop-out, but it's not a full extent. It's, and when, when you don't hear a full extent of an understanding, it really has a false leaning and a false tendency to the nature of it. So, one cannot be done without the other, you know, or else both will be undone, you know, because they won't be fulfilled in, in, in you know, the in you taking the footsteps towards the blueprint of meeting God in that place and the person of Christ being made made alive within you at that sanctified place. So there's there very much so is to try to explain life away and make understanding of it. Yes, it, it is a bit um, difficult, you know. But trying you trying to enlighten you to the the existence of the process and showing you that truth does have a concrete nature. And in this dimension I have to relate to you in any way, like a teacher, that if you, it, to, to give you something that you can't understand, even like Christ says, it's hard. I, I can understand it in the spirit, but try, to try to put it in, a, in, a, in terms of existence, it's difficult. But but then again, sometimes I don't. Want, I don't. The truth is doesn't have to be over complex. You know, if someone asks you what is truth, you're going to say, um, the person of Christ is truth. Because they, if they can't understand the person of Christ being truth in its, mo in, in its most objective existence, um, they haven't been readied for that example of a greater realization in their life. So they're not going to understand um, beyond that what, what truth to life is in an, in an existence form, you know. They're correlational, but... But this is not Christ consciousness. You know what I mean? This is not... People want to explain it like they can replace the God-man himself, Jesus Christ. And they can't. You can't do... You can attempt to go it alone. 
But like like I said, the efforts will be end up less satisfying, relationally speaking, with our God, you know. So moving on. You know, when we witness, and I'm going to verse 43, I have come in my Father's name, but you do not receive me. This is somewhat similar to just giving out the simple gospel message and someone not receiving it. You know, what's truth? It's the person of Christ. And they're offended by it, you know. They're offended because, you know, they haven't undergone the process of, of they don't know who they are. Because they really don't know who, that, that Christ is the beginning of who they truly are eternally, you know. They come from a false self. And when a false self comes to someone who has that greater realization and has that true self um, indwelt in them by the Holy Spirit, by the eternal witness of God, and, and in constant communion, constant eternal constancy with the living person of Christ, um, and not really using the person of Christ. See, a lot of the churchgoers today, they use the person of Christ as a means to an end. That's wrong. That's theology. When you use Christ as a means to an end, it's saying, it's like, go back to verse 31 and, and, and read this. Try to relate this. As Christ says, if I bear witness of myself, my testimony is not true. There is another who bears witness of me, and I know that the testimony which he bears of me is true. Once again, if I bear witness of myself, my testimony is not true. So people go... And they leave, they leave Christ's words at that. They leave the person of Christ right there at that, at that word of just Him giving witness of Himself. They don't conduct themselves in the same manner of, of going through the sanctification process of seeing that, that it's God's witness in my life which um, bears witness of me as Christ says. So, we're not to become Christ, but we are to exist in the words that He is proclaiming upon our lives, you know. This is an, you know, th this is like the action, decision, action, orientation that, that Christ, He Himself became offended by because the, the Pharisees represented everything that, that Christ didn't stand for. You know, he was very decision, action, orientation, follow through about the business of the kingdom of the Father. You know, and this is not the same thing as treating the person of Christ as a means to an end where you can go in and you can sit down and then you think you have an existing testimony. Because, you know, like Christ says um, in verse 39, you search the scriptures because you think in them you have eternal life. These are they who bear witness of me. So they do this. They come to him and they search the scriptures and they think in them they have eternal life. But yet ultimately the the, the, the established ideal of Christianity today is playing to the the established ideal of Christianity today is playing to the same tune as the Pharisees, in which they search the scriptures because they think they have eternal life, but uh, which do bear witness of him, as he says. Um, but you're not willing to come to me that you may have eternal life. So they haven't taken personally. They haven't began the process orientation of acquiring true self and, and growing through the, through the things in which they should have taken a leap of faith and uncovered the doubts about themselves in the process. So they don't really know themselves. So this is kind of an implication that Christ is saying is, you have to know yourself to know him, you know? Just as he told the Pharisees, you have to know, you know, you don't know the Father because you don't know me. Or you don't know me because you don't know the Father. And it, it, it can be, you, it can be ascribed to either way. But this is what, where it's at. And a lot of people think that, oh, we're stepping on grounds where we're, where, where we're, we're trying to replace Christ. And that's not the intent of Christ. Even Christ says, um, you know, he says that, um, after the Pharisees, even just like today's believers, they search the scriptures which testify of Christ, yet they're willing to come to me that they may have life. So, are they doing the right things and they look good? It looks like they are. The, the Pharisees looked like they were doing the right things. They were, they were going to synagogue. 
just like the believers in Christ today, they're going to church, they look, they, they're dressed up, they look like they're doing the right thing, but it wasn't the right thing according to what Christ was saying in verse 40, yet you are not willing to come to me that you may have life, you know? This is a very different concept that people are missing out in the, in the dualistic structure of, of growing out of the false duality of the Hegelian di dialectic and entering the nature of true self and trying and coming to Christ where he's made a al he's made alive in your life and so what's happening is people are you know the pharisees are proclaiming what is undone as done and it's just not so it hasn't even begun in Christ's words the actions and the and and the, and, and the follow through has never even been attempted you know, the traditions are all laid out and set forth, but the person has been forgotten. The individual has been forgotten in the process. And what I mean is, the established order doesn't want you to know yourself. Otherwise, you'd find Christ will be made alive in you, in your life. And hence, you will have eternal life. You will be made alive to the present awareness, and you will know you know, the bigger picture, I'm not going to say know all things, but you, you will know um, a lot. You will, you will be closer to what, and, and it's crazy because you, you'll know immediately what Christ means, the mystery of what he's saying, which is not really elusive at all. It's really a matter of the spirit. And, and it's a place where most remain in contention with the world, trying to, you know, proclaim the person of, of Jesus Christ without an existing testimony, I don't know.